Dog training is big business in Utah, and if you're looking for help, you'll find there's a lot of people willing to train your dog. Yeah, but what do you do if you pay good money and the training doesn't work? Even worse here, what if your dog doesn't come back alive? Well, it happened to a Salt Lake couple, and because the industry has no oversight, they believe it's putting your dog in danger. We're just in shock and so sad, and we're trying to grieve, but it's really hard to even be able to process what's happened when we don't have answers. It's been hard. A family lost their dog, and I can't express, how do you express in words like how bad you feel? No one will argue losing a loved one is painful. Ashley and Lane are feeling it. The business owner whose company trained their dog is feeling it and making things even more difficult. Nobody seems to agree on just how this five-year-old dog named Bear lost his life. So I'm just trying to understand what could have possibly happened. I've never had it happen and I feel awful that it's happened for this family. Guys, it's Ty with Ty the dog guy on the daily. For the past 15 years, Ty Brown. Of course, I recommend you hire us to do this with your dog. Also known as Ty the dog guy, has been in the business of training dogs. Just Google his name and what you'll find is a lot of experience, a lot of glowing reviews, a lot of stars. But if you look closely, there is one review in particular. We'll never know, you know, really what happened. Certainly worthy of some extra attention. Couldn't get a clear answer other than he was sometimes in his crate, sometimes let out of his crate, but that he was inside a house all day. I was getting very roundabout answers. Ashley and Lane say three days before getting dropped off to the trainer, Bear had a clean bill of health from the vet. He was not sick, no underlying health concerns, just needed some help with a little aggressiveness. But 48 hours into the training, and the seemingly healthy dog was rushed to the emergency room. Hyperventilating, dehydrated, with a temperature of 108.3. That is six to eight degrees above normal. It can kill a dog. The emergency room vet's report says it did. He was bawling, crying. And there's nothing we can do about it, nothing the vets can do about it. And my dog just wasn't there, even though I was looking at his body. He wasn't there anymore. Medical records show Bear had a heat stroke on a day that topped 96 degrees in Salt Lake. Ashley and Lane believe that outside temperature played a role in his death. Dogs are never left outside. Dog Our trainer's trainer boss says it did not. I'm sure that's why they're so upset, is because they believe that something else must have happened. Speaking for his trainer, Ty Brown says during the first two days of training, Bear spent a good amount of time in this crate inside the trainer's air-conditioned home, taken outside only a few minutes at a time to do his business. Throughout the day, the dog is with four or five different people, and there's no red flags. The dog's eating, the dog's drinking. Um, there's nothing to say, hey, this dog's in distress. That all changed in a matter of hours. Medical documents show Bear was having labored breathing, whining in pain, unable to stand, and having dark urine output. Ty says they rushed Bear to the vet where he died just hours later. Is this a fluke? Is it a fluke? I want to say yes, but that doesn't provide a whole lot of comfort to the family. Ty believes Bear's heat stroke was a result of prior dehydration and stress. And several vets we spoke with say that is... Absolutely. ...a realistic possibility. Anxiety and stress can play a part in all of it. Ty insists the dog got heat stroke under constant supervision. Nobody witnessed it. There's no picture, no video. But Bears owners are convinced it was a case of neglect. The only authority to make any determination came four days later after Ashley called animal control. This report obtained by the KSL investigators shows the officer visited the trainer's home. The trainer wasn't there, so the officer looked around for 33 minutes, spoke only to the trainer's wife, asked her one, two, three, four, five, six questions, and finally determined there was no neglect that took place. That is not the first time I've heard it. Won't be the last time I've heard it. Rachel Heatley is with the Humane Society of Utah and says a lack of state oversight for dog trainers is concerning. In Utah, all you need is a business license and you can tell the world you are a dog trainer. No formal education, no inspections, no regulations. So that's the issue. We need someone at the state level, we need a body at the state level who is objective and can say what's right and wrong. And when it's wrong, 
they can fix it. How are you guys different than animal control? Essentially, Heatley is pushing for the same kind of protection and oversight. We are a regulatory body at the state level. The state of Colorado is in force for the past 25 years. So we inspect them. Uh, we license them, and if anybody complains about them, we investigate the complaints on the facilities. That's Nick Fisher talking about Colorado's Pet Animal Care Facilities Act, or PACFA. In short, it requires trainers to be licensed, inspected annually, and mandated to report the death of a dog. We'll investigate the death, find out what happened. We'll go talk to, you know, if they got vet care for the animal, we'll go talk to the veterinarian, see, you know, hopefully they did a necropsy to find out what the cause of death was. A full-scale investigation that may have determined just how Bear got heat stroke and died. But with no statewide standards or oversight in Utah, the questions surrounding Bear's death will likely remain unanswered. Frustrating for the advocates still trying to change laws. What credentials do you have to be coming out and saying you're a dog trainer? Frustrating for the owners still hurting. Just wanting to try and understand how our dog ended up dead and frustrating for the trainers. I understand their anger. I think I would probably be angry too. Still battling accusations. I mean, we can sit here and speculate all day what happened. Did he come in dehydrated? I believe he did because I don't know how else this would have happened because he was taken care of really well. The Humane Society of Utah says no one in Utah currently maintains a comprehensive list of dogs who are injured or die in boarding and training facilities, making it nearly impossible to know just how often it happens in our state. Utah Department of Agriculture and Food is working with the Humane Society to try and figure out the details of proposed oversight. Ty the Dog Guy has issued Bears owners a full refund, covered the veterinary bill for Bears Care, and while understood, Bear cannot be replaced, offered to pay for a new dog when the timing is right.